it's unfortunate how most of the conversation around this Stanley Kubrick film Barry Lyndon starts and ends by praising its exquisite beauty and how each frame of the film is so akin to any great 18th century British painting and certainly it is one of the most beautiful films ever made but i think that treating the visual beauty of the film as its primary achievement would ironically prove the film's almost pessimistic view towards the lack of inner beauty and the ultimate disillusionment of thus incomplete physical beauty the basic trajectory of the film is the rise and fall of Barry Lyndon which is quite obvious if we see how externally he gains wealth and societal status and how he loses them but if we look internally it is just a fall and fall of Barry Lyndon not to imply that Barry is a callous person who ultimately suffers because of his evil deeds and also not to imply that he is just a poor victim of fate Barry is somewhere between these two poles not innocent enough to not suffer the way he did and not sinful enough to suffer as much as he did Stanley Kubrick smoothly and consciously walks the line as to not make Barry Lyndon just a cautionary tale in a conventional sense and also not make it just a social critique it sure has elements of both of these ways of storytelling but ultimately becomes something more than both of these combined the way i see it Barry is a person who surely has had bad encounters with fate but ultimately the choices which lead him to despair are made with extremely short term mindset and are quite animalistic at their core and i think the primary reason for these choices to lead him to despair is the sheer lovelessness with which he makes those choices Barry Lyndon is an honest depiction of what a loveless life looks like. Now sure he has a paternal affection for Captain Grogan and seems to love his son Brian immensely, but except these two examples there is no love in Barry's life. Not in what he does, not in who he lives with. It can also be seen as a tale where absence of love or to be more precise intentions masquerading as love can lead you to and it also shows the precarious nature of the relationships that are found without any basis in love. Firstly, looking at Barry's relationship with his mother, there is not a single scene in Barry Lyndon where Barry and his mother share a tender moment. It won't be wrong to say that in the second part, she is the reason for pushing Barry to obtain a title which will ultimately lead him to financial ruin. Secondly, unlike the naive adolescent infatuation with his cousin Nora Brady, This time Barry's reason for marrying Lady Lyndon is not physical but material infatuation that is his greed for Lady Lyndon's wealth now the reasons and intentions as to why exactly Lady Lyndon married to Barry without any apparent love is quite unexplored in the movie this lovelessness gets abundantly clear when Lady Lyndon asks Barry to stop smoking while they are in the cart and let her on to stop smoking Barry blew smoke in her face. I don't think any kind of narration would have the near the same effect as this scene. Later, as expected, Barry is unfaithful to Lady Lyndon and squanders all her wealth, which becomes the reason for his following despair. The only loving relationship we see in Barry Lyndon is between Barry and his son Brian. It's tragic how the only loving relationship Barry had with somebody gets ended soon, maybe to the fault of Barry. who spoils his son as an ex- expression of his love the kind of paternal love he never experienced
As Barry's father was killed in a duel, he always had this possibly repressed want for a father figure in his life, especially before he became one himself. From the start, we see Barry's relationship with Captain Grogan, which is filled with elements of a father-son relationship. And it's very interesting how the emotional scenes in Barry Lyndon, few though they are, are emotional because of a father-son dynamic. For example, in the battle against the French Royal Army, when Barry tries to rescue Captain Grogan, they share quite an emotional moment before Grogan dies. Later, when he rescues Captain Postroff, the reason behind doing that is also not completely devoid of any pattern and inclination. After that, when he is sent by Captain Postroff's uncle to see if Chevalier de Balibari, an Austrian diplomat, is an Irishman and a spy for Empress Maria Theresa, he gets emotional by hearing the Irish exempt of Balibari and they become confederates. These three examples are enough to get an idea that how Barry's inner void of never having a father tried to fill itself in this different ways. After that, when Barry becomes a father himself, he spoils his son trying to give him the love he himself as a son never received. And after his son dies, this void resumes its shape, but this time even more deeper. Barry Linden holds a lot of beauty, but it holds even more emptiness. By emptiness, I mean the emptiness in the lives of its characters. I think one of the reasons Barry Linden is created so beautifully is to create a contrast with the emptiness of our inner world, to show the duality of outer richness and inner emptiness. And the reason this film might seem cold is because in Barry Linden, behind this vibrant beauty, there is no passion, nothing to live one's life for. It's just an empty, futile pursuit of superficial beauty and the ultimate, inevitable disillusionment. There is a famous Robert Frost poem called Fire and Ice, which starts with these following lines. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. With fire used as a metaphor of desire and lust, and ice as a metaphor for coldness and indifference. Now I don't think it's unclear what Stanley Kubrick might have believed what the world will end from, fire or ice. 